What up my wonderful humans, your dude is back. And this time I've got a different kind of music video for you guys. I made my own video game theme in the style of Kirby and I wanna show you how it's done. So just to give a little background, there's this one class I took recently called Media Orchestration, where I basically wrote a short composition in a different style every single week. And one of the assignments was to write some music in a quirky style. So naturally I thought of Kirby. Kirby music is just so fun and bouncy, and so I decided to try to make my own Kirby sounding theme. And today I'm gonna show you the process I went through to imitate the music and sounds that are so iconic in the Kirby games. I also included the finished product of my custom Kirby theme at the end of the video, so hope you're excited for that. Also, just a disclaimer, the process I went through involves quite a bit of music theory and working with the digital audio workstation. So if you feel like that sounds way too complicated to understand, I don't want to give you a headache and waste your time, so you can jump ahead to this timestamp to go directly to my custom Kirby theme. But if you do want to hear about all the details of making Kirby music, then let's get started! First, let's start with the music itself. When I'm writing music, I like to look at the bigger picture first so I can narrow down my options for what I actually write. To start, what should our tempo be? Most Kirby themes are pretty fast and upbeat, with the tempo ranging between 120 and about 180 beats per minute. I settled on a tempo of 156, which I'd say is pretty average. Next, let's figure out the form. That way we can focus on writing one section at a time. Kirby themes actually have a very simple form. It's basically just two main sections repeating. Although about half the time, the second section is replaced with a third section every other repetition. I liked the idea of using this form just so that the music has a little more variety. All right, that was easy. Now that we have a general idea of the flow of the music, let's get more detailed and map out some chord progressions. Some composers may like to start with a melody, but most of the time, I personally like to have some chords to start with so I can write some melodies that fit within those chords. That being said, the harmonies is where Kirby music really starts to get interesting. Take Ice Cream Island 2 from Kirby's Adventure, for example. You'll hear that there's a pretty striking contrast in chords between the two main sections. Let's listen to the first section. in the key of E major, and there are four different chords in the first section. E, B, A, and C sharp minor, all of which are common chords within the key of E. But now let's listen to the second section. Yeah, now things are starting to get spicy! So the second section starts with these chords, some of which are already outside of the key signature. Once it gets to the last chord, it kind of sounds like we're in a new key. But we immediately get hit with these chords that like come out of nowhere, and then the music flips another 180 by playing these chords that bring us right back to the key of E as if nothing ever happened. That's a lot to process. If all that just flew over your head, don't worry. I'm just a bit of a music theory nerd. Basically, the TLDR is that the main section has more chords within the key, or diatonic chords, while other sections use a lot more borrowed chords from other keys. So here's what I did for my theme. I decided to put the theme in A major, and I came up with this chord progression for the first section. The G and F chords are outside of the key, so they are a bit unconventional to include in a first section, but they only last for one bar each, so it's nothing too crazy. Plus the A chords are held out for two bars each to clearly establish the home key. Now here's what I came up with for the second section. You'll hear that the striking contrast comes with the E flat major 7 to B flat major 7, similar to what we heard in Ice Cream Island 2. Next, I needed an idea for the third section. I liked this funky jingle that's in the middle of the Vegetable Valley 2 theme. So I chose to build something similar to that. I put in quick chromatic passing chords between these chords right here, which makes it sound a lot more like the Vegetable Valley 2 theme. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's write some melodies. There are a 
are a few main things I noticed about Kirby melodies, and I'll leave it to the Candy Mountain theme from Kirby Superstar to show what they are. Melodies here have a perfect blend of sounding playful and adventurous at the same time. Things such as stepwise motion and short repeated notes add to the playfulness, whereas elements like big leaps, sustained notes, and dotted 16th rhythms contribute to the adventurousness. Wait, that doesn't sound right. To the feeling of adventure, there we go. But probably one of the most important aspects of Kirby melodies is that the first phrase is repeated with the exact same beginning and a slightly different ending. Come to think of it, this is actually a very common tool to use when writing any sort of catchy melody, because it uses just the right amount of repetition and variation to get a main hook stuck in your head. In a good way. Obviously, you don't want to use too much repetition, otherwise you'll end up sounding like a children's song that you will never get out of your head and that somehow has over 8 billion views on YouTube! <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, where was I? Oh right, melodies. So keeping all these things about melodies in mind, here's what I came up with for my own melody. Awesome. So now that we have some melodies, the last thing to do is to put the rest of the toppings on the cake with things like bass lines, harmonies, and percussion. The bass lines mostly hop between the root and the fifth of each chord, and they either follow a simple downbeat rhythm or a more funky syncopated rhythm. <laughs> to harmonies, I find that they usually do three different things. Quick chord stabs, arpeggiated or broken up chords, and parallel melodic lines. Oh, and we can't forget to include those little blippy sounds in between phrases. You know the ones I'm talking about? And finally, the percussion is always driving with either a straight 16th note rhythm or a classic train shuffle, which sounds like this. I'll show what I did with my bass lines, harmonies, and percussion in what is now the second part of this video, the sounds of Kirby music. Now, what I'm referring to here is how the music sounds in different game systems. For example, the music from Kirby's Dream Land on the Game Boy sounds very different from the music from Kirby's Epic Yarn on the Wii. I decided that I wanted to imitate three different game music styles. 8-bit sounds, like the NES and Game Boy, 16-bit sounds, like the Super Nintendo and Game Boy Advance, and modern instruments, like the Wii and the Switch. And here's the part where we dive into the music production and working with a digital audio workstation. The one that I use is Logic Pro, so I'll be showing the whole production process there. So let's learn how to make some 8-bit sounds. The nice thing about 8-bit music is that the 8-bit game systems mainly use four different channels for the music. Three for the melodies and the harmonies, and one for the percussion. Technically, there's a fifth channel for sampled audio, but we're not going to worry about that. The tricky thing about it, though, is that you kind of need to model the sounds from scratch. Music Tech Help Guy has a great video that explains how to do this in detail, so go check that out if you want to dive deeper into making 8-bit sounds. But basically, all you need is a synthesizer that can produce square waves, triangle waves, and white noise, the three different kinds of sounds the NES can produce. After that, you'll want to mess with the attack, decay, sustain, and release to get the sounds you want. I used a very short attack and release on all the melodic since. The main melody has a shorter decay and longer sustain, while the harmony and bass have a longer decay and no sustain. Then I created a fourth track for the blippy sounds, which is a triangle wave with no sustain and a super short attack, decay, and release. Wait, didn't you say there's only three channels for the melodies and harmonies? Ah, you've been paying attention! Very good observation, you deserve some invincibility candy. So having a fourth melodic track is just for the sake of convenience. Yes, the NES can only play three notes at a time, but it's actually able to create an illusion of having more than three different sounds by quickly changing parameters within a single synth. But that can get pretty tedious to program on one track, so here it's easier to just add a separate track while making sure that only three of the melodic synths are playing at a time. 
This is basically what I did with the percussion too. I created three tracks for hi-hat, snare, and kick drum, but only one synth plays at a time in order to simulate one percussion channel. And with the percussion, you'll want to mess with the cutoff to focus on certain frequencies of the noise. For example, use a high-pass filter for the hi-hat, a low-pass filter for the kick drum, and a band pass focusing on the middle frequencies for the snare. So now that we have all the synths set up, let's plug them into the music and see how they sound individually. Sweet! Now let's go on to making some 16-bit sounds. For this category, I used the Having Fun Outside theme from Kirby Squeak Squad as a reference. After listening to how each part sounded, I tried to imitate those sounds by selecting some presets within Logic Pro's synthesizers and tweaking the settings a bit. For example, with the lead synth, I found this preset and added a little bit of white noise to make it sound more breathy and flute-like. <laughs> And for the percussion, I found a 606 kit that I really liked the sound of. 16-bit is also where we hear sound in stereo for the first time, so I decided to take advantage of that feature by panning a couple harmony tracks hard left and hard right. And that's about it as far as 16-bit sounds go. It's basically just a lot of browsing and experimenting to see which synths sound the best. And finally, let's finish up with modern instruments. The great thing about virtual instruments is that you don't need to model the sounds from scratch, but now that you can use hundreds of different instruments instead of being limited to four synth channels, it can be kind of challenging to figure out what instruments to use and how to use them. To put this amount of versatility into perspective, here's the list of instruments I ended up using for this category. I used steel drums, melodica, classical guitar, synth bells, marimba, organ, upright piano, upright bass, acoustic drum set, and triangle. <sighs> Not only that, but another challenge this presents is that you need to take into consideration the limitations of each instrument. Since the synthesizers in Kirby music are super fast, it's pretty much inevitable that you would need to simplify some things when translating to virtual instruments so that it sounds realistic and playable. You don't want to be like freaking Johann Sebastian Bach and write instrumental parts that are literally impossible to play. What are you people complaining about? Well, Mr. Bach, it's just that, uh... The music is too hard to play, Johann. What? Oh, nonsense. It can't be that hard. If I can play it on organs, then surely you can play it on strings. Nine! This is outrageous! None of us are mad geniuses like you, Johan! Give us some better music now, you little piece of- Hey, uh, Mega Dude, I appreciate the effort, but your German accent kind of sucks. So, can we just move on with the rest of the video? <clears throat> oh, sorry. I got a bit carried away there. Anyway, here are some examples of things I did to simplify the music a bit. With the steel drums playing the melody at the start, I had to take out some quick 16th notes that would have been a bit too hard to play. And with the upright bass, I replaced all the 16th note rhythms I had with simpler 8th note rhythms. Other than that, the only other thing to remember with virtual instruments is to just have fun with it. Seriously, it's so much fun to layer all these instruments on top of each other to see what sounds you can come up with. Okay, I think I've said more than enough here. So let's finish with the moment you've all been waiting for. Wait, 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 go back for a second. I think I saw some more tracks below all those virtual instruments. What are those for? <sighs> Dang it, that was supposed to be a surprise. Oh, sorry. Nah, it's fine. Let's just get on with the moment you've all been waiting for, Mega Dude XD's custom Kirby theme. Let's hit it!
way too much fun with that last section. <laughs> And that, my friends, is how you make Kirby music in multiple different styles. But before we finish, I need to ask you a few favors. First, if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe bar and the notification bell. And also hit the all option by the notification bell so YouTube can let you know about every single video that I upload. Second, tell me in the comments what you thought of this video. I personally had a ton of fun making it, but I also know it's very different from everything else I've done on this channel. So let me know. Was it informative or entertaining? Was it boring or way too long? I want to hear your thoughts. Or if you want to help me come up with a creative title for this theme, I'd love to hear your ideas for that too. My best title idea was Bubblegum Beach, but I dare you to come up with something better. And lastly, if you know anyone that you think would enjoy this video, take a few seconds and share the video with them. I want to reach out to other VGM fans and make their day a little better with videos like this, so sharing is a fantastic way to help support the channel. That's all for this video, so thanks a ton for watching, and more importantly, thank you for existing. We'll see you next time. Bye.